Uh, main event time now, and Glover Teixeira will be making the first defense of his light heavyweight title, but he faces a very, very dangerous opponent in the process. The number two seed, Yiri Prohaska. Betting odds for this one, Yiri is a minus 195 favorite. You can get Glover in at plus 165. INC voters, very similar way. Yiri Prohaska, 67% to win. Glover Teixeira, 33%. Now, John, it's fa fairly safe to say that the UFC fan base is quite divided on a lot of things. You talk about any sort of subject and they're almost at loggerheads with one another. If there's one thing that really united fans in the back end of 2021, it was Glover Teixeira winning the light heavyweight title, 42 years old, against Jan Blachowicz, UFC 267. Where were you when that happened? Because honestly, it was one of those great feel-good MMA moments that don't come around all that often. Yeah, I mean, I was, you know, watching the pay-per-view at home as always. And uh, I mean, I was sh I was shocked, honestly. I thought, you know, I, uh, you know, stupidly, very stupidly picked Jan to win the fight. And, uh, you know, thought his takedown defense would hold up better. I and mean, Glover just ran through and make him, made it look easy. So obviously, I agree. Feel-good moment of the year, probably. Um Everybody loves, I think, both these guys. I mean, both of these guys are super likable. This is an amazing fight. I've been talking a lot of negativity about this card, right? Um, you know, but first, I think what I'll say is Jack Della, great. Uh, I think they great idea putting him on the first fight on the main card. Bontra and Cop, that's a good fight. You know, Zhang, uh, Zhang and Yuan, a good fight. Uh, and then this fight is, you know, amazing. 10 out of 10. Doesn't get any better. You got a brand new matchup. You got the, 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 the fan favorite Glover as the champ defending his belt. You got the new killer, Yuri, who's been, you know, knocking dudes out as the challenger. And it's just a perfect fight, honestly. I mean, I can't wait for this fight. It's, uh, you know, it's a, it's very rare that we're getting like a new title fight in, in men's MMA these days for the UFC. We're getting a lot of rematches. But this one, I mean, a very original matchup. Can't wait to see it. And uh, it's an amazing fight. Uh, that's, what I'll, that's what I'll start with. And it comes at a very interesting time for the light heavyweight division because obviously John Jones vacated the title and there was pretty much a void left in his absence. And we've seen the new guard, which have still been very impressive, but they haven't properly filled that gap yet. You've got guys like Yiri, Ankalaev, Alexander Rakic, who certainly have a lot of potential. I'll add Jamal Hill in there as well. You've got guys who have a lot of potential, but they're not, they're not ingrained as stars yet. Is light heavyweight a good weight class right now? Is Glover the beneficiary of things just being a little bit weaker than what they normally are? Oh, it's definitely not good. It's it's not good. Um, I mean, no, not good. Um, but I just think that all all heavier fighters. I mean, pretty much once you get north of one seventy, the the quality of the divisions just absolutely plummets, like a, like a straight line down uh, in quality at, at once you go past one seventy. Um, so I don't think it's good. It, it's interesting. It's fun, you know. But uh, I mean, the skill level. I mean, these these guys are still old, big, slow guys, and uh, I mean. Glover, it's fun that Glover's a champion, but with the fact that you have a 42-year-old who gets knocked out and comes back in every fight as the champion just kind of shows the, where the division's at. But but make no mistake, John Jones wouldn't make it any better. That dude is 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 washed as the old laundry. I mean, uh, he's not coming back. He's not fighting in the UFC again, so no need to keep mentioning him. We'll talk. We'll mention then Glover Teixeira, 33 and seven record. As mentioned before, 42 years old, the second oldest champion in UFC history. Number one is Randy Couture, 43 years old, when he beat Tim Sylvia at UFC 68. And the big, if you had to point to one thing that sort of brought about this transformation in Glover Teixeira, if you looked at Glover's early UFC run when he was sort of like knocking people out left, right, and center challenged John Jones for the belt for many people believing this big one-shot Brazilian is just going to plow Jones and end up taking the belt and the reign of terror. Um, and now he's almost exclusively a grappler. And this grappling prowess is really catching a lot of people in this weight class off guard. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a great necessary change. I mean, when you're old like that, 40 plus, I mean, the striking, the reactions just aren't going to be there. So you have to, you know, make do and, you know, go back to the roots. And he, uh, fortunate for him, has, you know, a, a great grappling game, good takedowns, extremely heavy on top, can finish fights uh, really efficiently once he gets on top. 
And it's just ha- just so happens to be like the perfect, uh, you know, uh, plan B for the light heavyweight division because none of these guys can defend a takedown apparently. And uh, once Glover gets on top of him, he absolutely smushes them. So, uh, you know, just incredible stuff that he's been able to do this for this long. Um, but uh, you know, unfortunately for him, he's got uh, a you know a death defying menace in front of him this weekend, uh, and. Uh, I'll let you segue that into your jury introduction there, Carl. Yes, Yuri Pohovska, 28-3 and record. He's on a fantastic winning streak as well. Uh, notable wins, including his time in Ryzen. You've got people like Dominic Reyes and Volkan Uzdemir in the UFC. You go into Ryzen, he's beaten the likes of C.B. Dolloway, Fabio Maldonado, Brandon Halsey, former Bellator champion, King Mo Lawal, And I was surprised this fight actually happened. Kazuyuki Fujita. Fujita was still fighting and ended up fighting Yuri Pohovska right to the end of his career. That's some cruel shit right there. That's Japanese MMA for you. Um, obviously, former Ryzen light heavyweight champion. And I will add this sort of prefix, though, when it comes to Yuri's time in Ryzen. Because uh, one of my best friends, Uncle Joey MMA, I recommend you look him up on Twitter. He is really big when it comes to the Japanese promotions. So obviously, I asked him in regards to Glover's fighting style. What's Yuri's ground game like? And he said one word, limited. Yeah, I was, I was going to say bad. Um, yeah, I mean, the the fight to look at is the Carl Albrechtson fight from Ryzen back in, um, it was it was almost five years ago. Um, and, you know, he did get taken down. He spent a lot of time on bottom in that fight. Actually, Mo the Wall took him down too way back in like 2015. Their and I think first Halsey fight. did as well. Yeah, so I mean, he he can be taken down. I mean, he's definitely not like a good defensive grappler. Um, his takedown defense is not good. And once he gets on bottom, he can get stuck there for multiple minutes. But um, he's insanely athletic. He's going to be hard to hold down. He he knows how to get back up to his feet. And it's really going to be a matter of can Jerry kill Glover before Glover takes him down? Because to me, it seems like. The first few punches that Jerry lands are going to really wobble and hurt uh, Glover. And the first takedown that Glover gets, he's probably going to get really dominant positions and be liable for a finish. And I just think that one of these guys is finishing each other uh, by – it's either Jerry knockout or Glover sub within two rounds. I really don't see this one getting into the third round. I think it could only last a few minutes, uh, you know, which is, you know, a little unfortunate just because it's such an exciting fight. You'd like to see it play out a little bit more. But with how explosive these guys are and how great finishers they are, I just think it's destined to end either uh, by a jury uh, bonking him or to share a uh, sub in him. So not too original analysis there. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the consensus opinion by everyone. It's just a matter of which outcome you're going to settle on. Is it the jury knockout or is it the Glover sub? I do have some big concerns for Glover early in the fight because if you look at Glover's uh, run to the belt, nearly nearly every fight follows the same sort of template. He ends up getting rocked very early in the fight, gets on top position, and ends up managing to either ground and pound or sub his way to the win. We saw it against Thiago Santos. We saw it against Kut Laba. We saw it against Carl Roberson. So these sort of lower level guys were causing Glover a lot of problems very early on in their fights. Anthony Smith as well. And there's only so many times that you can get away with just barely surviving and ending up on top. That look's going to run out at some point. And at 42 years old, there's always going to be that question mark. Yeah, that is that is exactly right. I mean, uh, yeah, Roberson had him nearly knocked out with those Travis Brown elbows. Kudalaba was stuffing. Kudalaba stuffed like seven or eight takedowns before inevitably getting taken down. Krylov was a back and forth grappling fight. Smith had him hurt bad in the first two rounds. Santos dropped him in the first two rounds. It wasn't until he actually won the belt where he won a fight without much, without any resistance. I mean, he ran through Jan Blahovic with no resistance whatsoever. And, uh, you know, made it look easy. I mean, he was a two to one underdog in that fight and he looked like a a four to one favorite. So, I mean, he, he, you know, he ran through Jan there um, and, you know, he's going to be in another tough matchup here, though. I mean, just the speed advantage, the the power advantage for Yuri is going to be so much to overcome. I mean, just Yuri has very, you know, uh, sporadic movement. He's always kind of darting in and out and jumping and, you know, throwing flying knees and kicks and punches from all these angles. I feel like that 
is a really good strategy to, to fluster uh, Glover and to, to hit him with some unorthodox shots. Kind of like Tiago Santos did. You saw Santos, when they got in close, he would wing those big looping hooks or overhands, and he would be able to clip uh, Glover in those exchanges. And I think that Yuri's, you know, athleticism and his unorthodox kind of angles he comes from are going to be hard for, for Glover to, to anticipate. Yuri striking is a little bit porous. And we even saw Dominic Reyes causing him a lot of problems. That was like a fight of the year contender. People forget how good that fight was. Um, obviously, Glover maybe doesn't rely as much on his striking as he did back in his prime. But can he maybe see some openings in a stand-up battle? Can he maybe... Because he still has that power. He still rocked Jan Blachowicz to set up one of his takedowns. Yeah, I mean... I don't. I mean, it's it's possible. It's but I mean, I think just the speed advantage and the the other thing though is is Yuri's insanely durable. I yes. mean, uh, Reyes landed straight left hands, straight to the chin, and this dude wasn't even taking you know was was taking them with ease. Um, Yuri has shown susceptibility to leg kicks a lot, but but Glover's not doing that. No. Um, so I mean, I think that any. You know, say they're exchanging a few punches. I just feel like if Glover really tries to connect on the chin of Yuri, he's just going to leave himself open. And his he's at such a durability disadvantage that his uh, that any time for him exchanging in the pocket is is not uh, you know time well spent. Glover's mentioned we saw his interview with uh, Room Service Diaries, Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell. They did an interview with him. And he did mention that he is looking to retire either with the belt or without later this year. Do you think maybe mentally having one foot out the door might affect how he approaches this fight? I don't think so because this guy has probably had one foot out the door for like five years now. Honestly, like, like seriously, he lost. He didn't he lose. He lost like multiple. I'd say after the Gustafson fight, he probably really started contemplating retirement, and then he went on to go, you know, six and one and be the champion since then. So I feel like he's had his foot out the door for a while now, and it really hasn't slowed him down. So I see no reason to suggest that it will now. So put your money where where your mouth is. Who's winning this one and how? Jiri, knockout, round one. Sad to say it. Glover, I mean, I picked against Glover last time, but, um, you know, obviously I, I neglected to, to realize that Jan Blahovich hasn't improved his takedown defense at all. Um, but Jan is, he's slow. His his feet are, you know, very planted. He doesn't move very well. Yuri is agile. He's fast. He's in and out. He's quick. He's powerful. He's durable. I mean, he's got all the uh, the tools to make this a, a really nasty fight on the feet. Um, obviously, if he gets taken down, it's probably going to be a wrap from then on. But I just trust Jiri to hit him with some shit before he gets taken down and, and to knock him out. 